This week's super skinny is 33-year-old Kim Fork. She's a marathon-competing single mum, whose sparrow-like portions means she's running on empty. At the moment, I think my body is... I think it's too skinny. I'm quite embarrassed about my arms and my legs. As a competitive long-distance runner, Kim trains an average of 11 hours a week, covering a whopping 70 miles. When I'm out running, you get people saying, oh, you don't want to be doing that, love, you want to be down the chip shop. A young son, a busy job and a stressful divorce mean that over the last two years, Kim has left no time to nourish herself properly and her weight has plummeted. It just worries me to death because she seems to be going thinner and thinner. Food's not a priority for me because I, I'm always running around, I'm always doing other things, making sure Nathan's all right and everything else all right before I really think about what I'm eating and doing. For speed and convenience, Kim's daily diet is mostly made up of liquids. Even her main evening meal is usually soup. And not only is she lacking any meat on her bones, she has a phobia of the processed and minced variety too. If you put a minced beef lasagna down in front of me, I'd be like, I don't particularly want to eat that because I don't know what's in the minced beef and things like burgers from fast food chains I wouldn't touch. Plain one here for me, Kim. An average woman of five foot four should weigh about eight and a half stone. Eighty-seven pounds. So at six stone two, Kim is dangerously underweight. So around your middle, you are twenty-four and a half. All right. Her extreme diet combined with her excessive training is putting Kim's body in the danger zone. Your BMI turns out to be 15.4, which is one of the lowest BMIs that I've seen in a very long time. A normal BMI should be between 20 and 25. If I tell you that Paula Radcliffe, her BMI is 18.1. She trains hard. Very hard. But she eats properly. You can't expect your body to work well without the proper food. You need to refuel it and you will see your training improve, I promise you. I really want to get my diet spot on because I think that's the big part of my training. Right. It's about time that I did make this a priority. If Kim is going to keep crossing the finishing line, she needs a serious shock tactic. She's about to face her toughest competitor yet. Supersize mum of three and takeaway queen, Trudy Alexander. Although her mammoth measurements mean she's no match for Speedy Kim on the track, there is one thing Trudy likes fast, her food. Trudy is a self-confessed takeaway addict. She runs her own electrical shop on a high street filled with all her fast food favourites, which she finds impossible to resist. I love Chinese, Indian, pizza, anything really. Right, I make you 59 inches. But Trudy's love affair with high-fat food is finally taking its toll. 330 pounds. That's a lot. At 23 and a half stone, she's at her biggest ever. And nobody is more horrified about this than Trudy herself. I think that I'm repulsive, physically. I think I'm quite disgusting. And it's not just Trudy who's deeply worried about her size. You think? You can't be that big without having some sort of knock-on effect to your internal organs. It worries me for the, for the kids. Yeah, they're, they're worried that I'm going to drop down dead. I mean, I'm worried I'm going to drop down dead, you know? My little boy's seven, you know, without a mum. ain't good, is it? From Dr Jessen's measurements, Trudy has a body mass index of 51, which is double the healthy range. This classes her as morbidly obese. How does your weight affect you? Oh, I'm finding it difficult now um, to walk around. I get out of breath walking up and down stairs. Really? I can't look after my children and take my children out like I used to. Are you waiting to have a heart attack and then you're going to decide, OK, maybe I'll do something else? What is it? I don't know. I just... I need something to happen to make me do it, and this is the whole reason of coming here, because I need a kick up the backside. I'm going to give you one. I need someone one. to help me. I'm going to give you one. Thank you. With over a 17 stone difference, these two are extreme opposites. Trudy's thigh is three and a half inches bigger than Kim's tiny waist. Oh, I wouldn't want to be seven stone. I don't think that's any more attractive than in a bikini than someone like me in a bikini. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. Hello. 
Hi, I'm Trudy. I'm King. Pleased to meet you. And you. Oh, it's been I know. For the next week, they will swap diets, meal for meal. They will be shocked into facing their own body issues and forced into changing their eating habits for good. You wait till you see what I eat, love. <laughs> well, wait no longer, ladies. It's time to come face to face with their own shocking weekly food intake. Right. So here we go. We're going to start off with your breakfasts. This is the probiotic drink that you have every morning, don't you? I think also occasionally at the weekend you get some porridge, porridge don't you? Right. That's it? Yes. It's not enough for a marathon runner for breakfast. Let's have a look what you go for through lunch. That's a salad sandwich. That's another salad sandwich. Pretty much every day. I don't know how she could live on it. <laughs> Any more? I think the worst thing that come down the tube was like the probiotic milkshakey things and the yoghurts. I don't eat yoghurts. The rest of it weren't bad, there just wasn't a lot of it. Right, let's move on to dinner. Soup? Yeah, all soup. Any meat? No. You're missing out on a lot of important proteins to build muscles that give you the strength that you need to do your runs. Essential amino acids are called essential amino acids because you can't make them. You only get them from your diet, and that includes meat. It makes me realise how little solid food I'm actually eating. There's no real substance there at all. It's just fluid. Given all the exercise she's doing, Kim needs around 2,500 calories a day. She's actually consuming as little as 1,000 calories a day. This is a drastic undereat of four days' worth of food a week. And by running for two hours a day, Kim is actually burning off over 1,000 calories, so her body is existing on a calorie deficit. And at this rate, with this number of calories, you're going to be losing approximately a pound in body weight a week. So, Trudy, a pasty. For breakfast, yes. Bars of chocolate. Chris, before lunch. Oh, yes, egg fried rice. OK. Sweet and sour chicken balls and sauce. Everything so far has been fried. Dinner time. What on earth is that? Oh, that's battered sausage with chips and curry sauce. That's just goes straight into your arteries. That is saturated fat. I must be honest, I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to eat, like, three large meals like that and snacks every day? What are they? I think they're chicken nuggets. Yeah. The average woman needs 2,000 calories a day. Trudy is packing in a whopping 3,000. This is an overeat of three and a half days' worth of food every week you get to double your daily allowance of salt. Salt gives you high blood pressure. High blood pressure gives you heart failure and heart attacks. All right? That means swollen ankles and shortness of breath. You get swollen ankles. You get short of breath. You get to double your daily allowance of fat. Double your daily allowance, not just a little bit more. Not good, is it? And we haven't finished. No, you haven't. There's more, because the eating goes on at night, doesn't it? Yep. What are you thinking? I don't know, I'm still alive. It's disgusting. Dieting. We've all been there. The cravings, the hunger pangs, the longing for that one food you just can't have. And then comes the failure. Ooh. And a group of ladies who know all about falling off the wagon are the buxom beauties from Wales, my flab fighters. But in the next few weeks, I'll be helping them out in their fight against the flab. But the twist is, they can still eat the good stuff. So far, they've been vacuuming to burn off chocolate, but has all that hard work paid off? Let's see if they've been shedding the pounds with the weekly weigh-in. I've lost three pounds. I've lost two. I've lost the pound. Oh, I've lost half a stone. Stay the same. I put on four. <laughs> I lost the pound. 
Well done, girls. After just one week, they have lost a grand total of one stone, three pounds between them. But the battle of the bulge continues, and reason number two to fall off the diet wagon is cheese. I love cheese. I'll eat cheese on pizzas. I'll eat cheese in tomato sandwiches. I'll eat cheese on toast. Just love cheese. But there's a price to pay for chewing on cheddar. So, because of your love of cheese, our exercise for today is that we are going to be gorging on cheddar, basically, in Cheddar Gorge. To burn off 150 grams of Tracy's favourite cheese, my fat-biting fillies will be hiking for an hour and 20 minutes around Britain's largest gorge. And waiting for them at the top is a tempting cheese-tastic treat. So, will they bank or binge? Once we get to the top of the gorge, you can then decide whether or not you want to eat a little bit of cheese or whether you want to bank your calories and basically use that to lose some weight. All right? You're not looking very happy about that, are you? <laughs> and it's a whopping 655 calories which they'll be burning. It's raining, girls, but it's not raining men. OK, not yet. It's a tough climb through forestry, rough terrain and actual cliff face, all for a 150-gram piece, that's about six ounces, of cheese. I feel like a giant condom. You look like fun. Thank you. <laughs> hey, up, Trace. I've never seen you move so fast. Huh? Are you after that cheese or what? Oh, yeah. Oh, for oh, smelly. Look. If you are partial to a chunk of cheese, then weigh it up before you pack it in. For a 150 gram slab of Edam, you'll be hiking for around one hour. A sneaky slice of Stilton will cost you around a one hour, ten minute hike. And for Tracy's favourite cheddar cheese, you will be hiking for about one hour and twenty minutes. Come on, Jackie. Are you on a steel, Trace? I don't like cheese! <laughs> 655 calories, ladies. But after all that climbing, what will the girls choose to do? Bank their calories or binge on cheddar? Check it out, we've reached the top. <laughs> this is your award, OK? We have done around 655 calories. And especially in this wind and this rain, it's been quite hard work. So, grab one each. This is what you can reward yourselves oh, with if you want to. Or you can bank your calories. So who's up for a gorge on Cheddar Gorge? Who wants them? <laughs> Me. Oh, no, you <laughs> don't have Who has a little bit? I don't have no more. You never oh. Who doesn't want to have it? Me. Who wants to bank the calories? Me. Yeah? Hey, you up. You've had a little nibble of yours, haven't yeah. you? This is really good. You're all wanting to bank your calories. Tracy, you have done a hard hike. I know. So you just have a little nibble on that. Mm. Look, you can have your cake and eat it, or have your cheese and eat it. You can gorge on it. Ah. All right, half half, that's fine, but then you're still banking 300 calories. Guilt, I love it. <laughs> well done. Next time I look at a block of cheese, I'm just going to think twice. I'm going to think to myself, there's no way that I'm going to eat that cheese because I'm not going to hike like a walk like I did today. No way. Go oh, well, cheese! Super skinny six stone three Kim is a marathon running mum who never finds time to refuel her body. She's swapping diets for five days and nights with supersized 23 and a half stone Trudy. It's the first night in the feeding clinic. Kim is giving Trudy her usual liquid based evening meal vegetable soup and a slice of brown bread. I have this as lunch, but I usually have two or three pieces of bread and usually the bus wrong. <laughs> Trudy has given meat fearing Kim a feast of flesh. Six chicken drummers, a duck breast, Topped off with chicken and bacon pasta. When I saw it on the plate, I was so, oh my god. I'm not particularly enjoying the uh, textures at all. All this bone and mm. skin and, yeah, meat I just don't really eat. <laughs> Her taste buds might not be appreciating this meat dish, but Kim's body will be more than grateful for the protein. As an elite runner, Kim's muscles are put under extreme pressure and need proteins to help them repair and rebuild. The essential amino acids found in protein-rich foods like meat and fish are needed for the body's central nervous system, immune system and brain function. We finished. I enjoyed mine. I feel like I've been eating. <laughs> Kim still has a long way to go with her meat marathon, 
but our dedicated competitor is determined to cross the finish line of her first meal. Can't get my head round that she'd eat that sort of size every night, plus everything else that she eats as well. It's just like amazing. You done it. Well done. <laughs> Kim's applying the same determination that she does to her running to the challenge of the diet swap and this is really going to show her that she can eat a lot more food. A couple of handfuls of that yeah. and unfortunately a All little bit that. of chocolate. Kim still has an evening of snacking before she can call it a day. You ever feel guilty about eating it? I don't forget caught. <laughs> Snacking in the evening when the family have gone to bed has become one of Trudy's worst food habits. Most of my weight problems have been around times where I've either been stressed or unhappy. The business has struggled lately. But, you know, the stress makes you want to eat. Then being down because you're so big makes you want to eat. And it's very easy to turn to food. This stress-related eating is now affecting her relationship with her partner, Stuart. Being this size, I'm very, very conscious of him touching the fat bits and over the years there's got more fat bits than not fat bits so the sex life has gone from being quite healthy to on occasion and after just one evening of Trudy's food Kim isn't feeling very loving either I'm actually feeling quite sick my tummy's just saying oh all that greasy sweet oh food it's just like yeah I'm trying not to think about it too much, but oh dear. It's lunchtime on day two, and Trudy's taking Kim out to a local Chinese for one of her favourite dishes, egg fried rice with deep fried sweet and sour chicken balls. There's your lunch. And Trudy gets her first solid food of the day, a salad sandwich, but with no butter. This is revolting. It really is hot. It's because you're not used to it. I absolutely love chicken balls and batter and the fried rice and the sauce is my favourite. So for Trudy, watching Kim eat this meal is torture. The look of love is in your eyes. Sometimes I have curry sauce occasionally. Oh, it always grease. One of my worst nightmares on a plate. Seeing the disgust on Kim's face was ever so difficult for me. I thought she's, it's like she was judging the food, it's like she was judging me. It made me feel small and not very nice. Absolutely awful. It was a horrible experience. I can still smell that horrible, like, chickeny, sweetly sour smell on my fingers. And I've got, like, this vile, sort of greasy film in my mouth. It's like, ugh. The kinds of high-fat, high-salt meat in Trudy's diet isn't helping Kim to overcome her flesh phobia. But you don't have to rely on meat for your protein. Other sources are peas, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, tofu and dairy products. Kim's reluctance to embrace the diet swap is causing further damage to her body. Dr. Jessen wants her to rethink her diet by showing her the shocking reality of her skeletal frame. What do you think of that picture, Kim? I think it looks horrible, to be perfectly honest. It's awful. You're a runner, you put your body through hell. You need to look after your body and it will look after you, but it cannot do that if you don't treat it right. What about this picture? Um, my arm looks really old and haggard, I like a skeleton. It's very, very prominent bones here. Yeah. Being this light is a risk factor for osteoporosis. So it's a significant problem. It's quite a scary thought. And I do worry long term that my body's just not going to be able to cope with what I've been putting it through. Kim's extreme exercise is putting enormous pressure on her joints. The lack of protein in her diet means that the cartilage holding the joints together is less able to repair itself. Long term, this combination can have painful consequences, such as osteoarthritis and eventually joint replacement surgery. Guess the age of the person in this picture. Um, I'd put her pretty old, to be perfectly honest, probably 45, 50. I think that looks like an old lady. I really do. That's all right. I just think it looks awful. And I think, I'm thinking about what my son would think if he saw that. It looks horrible. Do you think this is going to be enough to get you to change things? That's what I'm hoping this week's going to do. So, if you're lapsing and you found you haven't eaten properly in a day, I want you to think back to that picture and think how you 
don't want to look like that anymore and we can change it. Kim has a family to look after, but if she continues to abuse her body in this way, then she's at risk from arthritis and brittle bones, and that's going to make her struggle to be the mother that she so wants to be. It's dinner time, and Kim is faced with one of her dreaded food phobias, minced beef in the form of spag bol. I just feel like after lunch here, you could honestly feel you need to eat all this food. Kim's had a marathon day of food, but urged on by Dr. Jesson's words of warning, this competitor will not be beaten. Trudy, meanwhile, is falling at the first hurdle as she picks at her prawns. I'm sorry, I can't eat the fish. There's no way I'm eating prawns like that. It's not fair. No, it's fair that you've not even attempted to. I did. I tried a prawn and a scallop. And if, unless you want me to be sick on the plate, I don't do s seafood anyway. I can't force you, but I'm here to eat your diet. Mm and to learn. And if I'm not going to do that, no point me being here. I won't. Oh, it's your call. But at the end of the day, I mean, I went to bed last night feeling really physically sick. And I felt ill in the night too. At the end of the day, I'm not here to make myself ill. I'm here to make myself better. And I won't eat it at home and I won't eat it here. I don't like processed meat at all, but at the end of the day, I'm giving it a go. She didn't even seem to want to give it a go, so... A bit let down. A bit disillusioned. Trudy's determination to change her eating habits is already under threat. So it's time for a big wake-up call. I brought you here because I want to really hammer home the importance of why you need to change your diet. Mm -hmm. It will only be detrimental for your health. So I want you to meet someone today who's really reached the end of the road. Okay. And this is going to shock you now into never going back to your old ways. Okay. okay, come with me. And shocks don't come much bigger than morbidly obese Lisa Wheeler. She's five foot three and weighs in at 26 stone. She's virtually housebound and needs help with the most basic daily tasks. As a result of her weight, she suffers from diabetes, high blood pressure, deep vein thrombosis, sciatica and edema in her legs. By bringing Trudy to spend the morning with Lisa, Dr. Jessen hopes to open Trudy's eyes to the true horrors of life at this size. I can't touch me, get me feet, you know, getting things done, putting underwear on, it's hard, putting clothes on. I used to look after myself and put cream on my feet. Can't do nothing like that now, I can't, because I've got so much swelling. See how the... How badly swollen? A lot of swelling oh. around here. Yeah. And you're getting swelling in your legs yeah you know look these are swollen aren't they yeah very they're swollen around here i want you to take note of this because that is the beginning i'm frightened to ever get into that stage where someone has to look after me i well. just and to bring the message home trudy must now help with the morning routine right shall we get you dressed now lisa do you want to put this on for Lisa? Yeah, I can put it on for you. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, fine. It was quite upsetting to think, you know, that I'm not very far from that. I've already got some of the symptoms she's got, shortness of breath, swollen legs, things like that. There's a great possibility that if I don't change now, I will end up like Lisa. To be honest, I'd rather be dead than have to have my family and friends look after me to that extent. You're all dressed nicely. Thank you. It really has made me see that, you know, what I am doing to my body is basically poisoning it and just killing myself anyway. So the only person that can stop that and do anything about it is me. And, yeah, I want to change. Over the series, we'll be following Lisa as she undergoes drastic surgery to remove two-thirds of her stomach in a last attempt to rid her of obesity. After the operation, food-loving Lisa will only ever be able to eat tiny amounts of food for the rest of her life. Super skinny marathon runner Kim and super-sized takeaway queen Trudy have been swapping diets in the feeding clinic for three days. It's dinner time, and tonight the pressure's on for Trudy and Kim to face their worst food fears. Tuna fish for Trudy and a battered sausage for Kim. Dr. Jessen's on hand. Kim, how do you feel about this dinner in front of you? I'd like to run away from it, perfectly honest, as fast as I could. It is your worst nightmare, isn't it? Mm. It's processed meat. Yeah. Are you going to eat it? I'll try. 
You're a good girl. Trudy, really, how do you feel about that? No, everything's fine apart from the fish. You're not a tuna fan, are you? I'm not a fish fan. Remember, all this process is about breaking habits, breaking habits, and whilst I'm not too worried if you never want to eat a scallop in your life, I am concerned that you maybe have some rigid thoughts stuck in your head that I won't do this, I won't, I won't, and I kind of want to break that. I want to liberate you mm. and your attitudes towards food, and I want you to sort of love and embrace food, but in a healthy, sensible way, and not this very destructive way that you've been doing. Are you going to give it a go for Kim's sake? Yeah. Yeah? I know it's a struggle, but I never said to you it would be easy. No. It's tough, but you're getting there. Tuck in, girls. Go on. This is your favourite chip shop meal. Yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> but for fish hater Trudy, tucking into tuna is an eye-watering experience. I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> Myself. <laughs> I dare say you feel the same, you just, uh... <laughs> I was always going to eat it because I let Kim, Kim down the other day and I didn't want to let her down again because she's been, done so well, you know, and some of the stuff that she's had to shovel into her is disgusting. <laughs> Although I wouldn't eat the quantity that Trudy eats and I certainly wouldn't eat the types of food that Trudy eats, it's making me more aware that the portions that I eat are far too small. For, for what I'm doing. I hope it makes up for last night. Because <laughs> I've shocked myself at the amount of food I've managed to put away because I thought I'd never be able to do it, to be perfectly honest. Kim is really challenging her deep-rooted food fears and she's keen to explain to Trudy where these obsessions first came from. I just turned 18 on this photo mm -hmm. and really like, confident, happy with my body. Probably eating miles more than what I am now, a lot of healthier diet. Not skinny, it's no. almost like a perfect figure to, to, to some Yeah, well, I used to like my figure then, yeah, I really yeah. did. Wouldn't it not be nice to look like that again? Oh, yes. I was just happy, just yeah. content. It was, you know, food wasn't an issue. I wasn't emotionally upset or stressed or anything, so. Yeah, just enjoying it. Yeah, just enjoying it. Mm. Uh, this is about two years ago, just split up then with Nathan's dad. Mm. Very stressful time yeah. and I've lost a bit of weight there, I yeah, think you can yeah. see. Yeah. When I get emotional, upset and yeah, it's like I stop eating and I don't pick out where a lot of people pick and get the comfort from the food, I get really anxious. Trudy hasn't always been super size. She was once a voluptuous lady happy with her body. But seven years ago, she went through an emotional trauma when she almost lost her premature baby. That was the start of this, <laughs> this progression now. Do you think it's linked, perhaps, to the I traumatic time then? Or? Yeah, I think I just stopped caring. I didn't care anymore what um, people thought at that time. I just wanted him home. You don't care about yourself so much, do you? No, you, you, you don't care think more. About it. Yeah, for the, for the so little. they there, okay? You're okay. Yeah. So. Kim and Trudy are realising that they're actually both pretty similar because they both use emotions to control their eating. But this week, I'm going to teach them to master those emotions and so take control of their weight. It's day four in the feeding clinic. And after a belly-busting morning of noshing junk food, athletic Kim decides it's high time to get physical and tackle Trudy's sedentary lifestyle. And she brings along a pair of four-legged friends to help out. She might like to get a bit of exercise and take them for a walk. Oh, yeah. Trudy's size means her legs can't take long walks, so she's no longer able to take her own dogs out. I love my dogs. I miss my dogs. I think it's realistically something that you could fit into your lifestyle. Definitely. When I first started running, believe it or not, I couldn't run from one lamppost to the next. Really? And the only way... I managed to increase the mileage I did was by running and walking. And it just built up. And I just built up from that. By walking her dogs for just half an hour every day, Trudy could burn off 2,000 calories a week. That's a full day's food. It's the final meal in the feeding clinic, and both Kim and Trudy are glad to be saying goodbye to each other's diets. I still can't get used to it. I'm not going to be following your... Um, <clears throat> Pasty and uh, battered sausage diet, that's for sure. No. <laughs>
Now they're at the end of the diet swap shock tactic. It's time for Kim and Trudy to say goodbye and go home to start their 12-week eating plans. But before they go, there's one last meeting with Dr. Jessen. What do you think you've learned so far this week? Well, I've learned that I allow my emotions to control what I eat. And actually, by listening to my head, um, I've not actually been that hungry. And you felt real hunger for the first time. Yes, I did. Which is, I want you to remember that feeling. Yeah, I just, I can't wait to start planning all the meals I'm going to have that are better. And Kim, what do you think you've learned this week? Um, I've learned that my portion sizes need to be a lot bigger. I also need to plan my meals and what I'm going to eat a lot better. Yeah. And I've also learned that I can eat a hell of a lot more than what I thought I could. So, you can. Yeah. And that it's going to do you some good. Yeah. It's time for Trudy and Kim to go their separate ways and use what they've learned in the feeding clinic to change the way they eat forever. During my time here, I've come to realise that, you know, I'm using food as an emotional crutch instead of actually confronting the things that are actually causing me to turn to the food. I think with this swap, I've done really well. I'm really proud of myself and I know that I'm going to be able to keep it up. Last series, we highlighted a wide range of food issues from fussy eaters to overeaters. And in response, an overwhelming number of people got in touch with us looking for help. Among them were Rachel, Rebecca, Elaine and Fiona. They all suffer from anorexia. Eating disorders, and in particular anorexia nervosa, affects over 60,000 people in this country. We wanted to explore the complex issues surrounding this illness. To help these young women on the road to recovery, we've been working with renowned eating disorder specialists. What is anorexia? It's a hugely dangerous mental illness in its severe form. Almost one in ten of them will, in the longer term, die. So what are the physical effects of, of anorexia? Well, obviously the most obvious one is weight loss, so that a, a severe sufferer will be absolutely skeletal uh, in thinness. I think that most of us, or, or most women, can certainly identify with being on a diet. So at what point does dieting become not normal behaviour and slipping into anorexia? I suppose that the crucial issue with it really is when it takes off so that you're predominantly thinking about that all the time. You're descending into a world which is dominated by issues to do with body weight and eating behaviour. Part of their therapy is to talk about their body image and how they control their weight. Only by confronting these issues can they start to move on. Rachel is aged 21, 5 foot 3 and weighs just 5 stone 12. Rachel has only been diagnosed with anorexia for three months, but her eating disorder started two years ago after an injury put an end to her dreams of becoming a professional athlete. Once I lost athletics, I think I lost a part of me. I was just kind of just left on a lurch, and my new obsession in life went on to food, and I used to start restricting what I ate. I ate an abundance of fruit and vegetables, because it fills me up. I know there's no calories in there. I won't snack on any, like, chocolate or yogurt or crisps or things like that. I don't go a day without exercising. I do, like, 200 press-ups, about 200 sit-ups do tricep dips, do squats, do lunges. It's basically like a really intense body circuit I do. Yeah, I'm really aware of what I do, but I can't actually stop it now. Rebecca is aged 21, 5 foot 5, and weighs just 7.5 stone. It's much easier for me to deal with if my food's in packets. I know there's a certain amount of calories within that packet, and I trust it not to be, be any more I try and eat when, when there's nobody around because I don't want to feel that I'm eating when nobody else is because I feel greedy for that. And with my cereal bars, I'll break it up into tiny bits because that's a bit easier for me to deal with as well. Elaine is aged 35, 5 foot 5 and weighs 7 stone 4. I've damaged my body quite a lot over the years and I think the chances of me having kids, well, I've been told are very minimal. I've never really been able to hold down a relationship with anybody. I feel very resentful now. I'm really um, hurt and upset that the eating disorders left me without a normal life. 
and lastly Fiona, aged 27, is 5 foot 10 and weighs 7 stone 9. Restricting my food intake and controlling my eating made me feel good about myself. I became very, very good at losing weight and I set myself a target and when I met that target it made me feel very, very good. So I would set myself another target and then when I reached that target again I felt good about myself and it just escalated out of control. Like most anorexics, these four girls all share an obsession with the calorific content of food. So if we just move across to the table um, with our dinners. Eating disorder dietitian Ursula Philpot has worked with many anorexic women and the first stage is to educate them on the importance of a normal healthy diet. They have very little idea about what to eat, how to eat, when to eat, when they're full, um, and they don't. They also can misinterpret a lot of physiological symptoms as well. And really, my job is to help clarify those, to help them trust food again. Really, at their first meeting, the girls have all brought along their typical evening meal. A healthy portion should contain around 800 calories. Rachel has brought along a huge vegetable curry, which in fact contains only 200 calories. Though it looks large, the calorie content is extremely low. It's a large portion, but it's, it's all, all vegetables, vegetables, absolutely all vegetables. Okay. And Fiona? I've brought with me um, salmon fillet. Fiona's salmon, two potatoes and vegetables has only 250 calories. And that would be your normal evening portion as well? Yes, yeah. it would. Okay. Elaine. Um, yeah, I've made like a sort of pilaf stroke risotto. And Elaine's chickpea risotto contains only 400 calories. Yours is well balanced because you've got the three food groups in there. You've got the carbohydrate, the protein and the vegetables. But again, you know, there's no fat there. And Rebecca? Um, this is pretty much what I'd eat for the, for the rest of the day. And finally, Rebecca's meal, alarmingly, has just 130 calories. That's quite different, isn't it, to something, you know, like, like I'm having, that that's quite a significant difference. So that would be a really big change for you, then, to have yeah. something on a plate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anorexia is defined by obsessive and controlling attitudes towards food. Common ritualistic behaviours to look out for include eating the same foods on certain days of the week, cutting food an exact number of times and eating food off a plate in a specific order. I generally have to have my protein on the right hand side and my carbohydrate on the left. I don't know why. Okay. It's just that's what I do. <laughs> Is that normal? <laughs> Seeing the different portion sizes of foods made me realise how almost pathetic mine was. I think the bigger challenges for me are, are when I'm going to be eating foods that I don't normally eat. For me, to have the support from everybody else in the group will be beneficial and will spur me on to really make a difference this time. I find today really useful just to gain an insight to other people's eating disorders and to know that I can get cured. In two weeks' time, we'll catch up with the girls on a shopping trip where we'll find out how body dysmorphia Gosh, I really don't like looking at that. <laughs> and obsessive food habits blight their lives. And they face their first challenge to eat a full fat cheese sandwich. My heart's going boom, 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 boom. It's been six weeks since supersized Trudy and super skinny Kim left the feeding clinic with their tailor made eating plans. Kim's is designed to help her gain about a pound a week. She's increased her daily calorie intake from a paltry 1,000 to 2,900. She's more than doubling her carbohydrate intake to provide essential energy for her running. And she's introduced more protein-rich foods to encourage muscle repair. And with a good solid breakfast to start off every day, she's no longer running on empty. Meanwhile, Trudy is cutting her current 3,000 calories a day to 1,900. She's waved goodbye to takeaway lunches and replaced them with home-cooked healthy meals, which she can take to work with her. Now she's learned that she can survive on much less food, she's also slashing her portion sizes. And she's getting off the sofa to walk her dogs. Still to come, it's the moment of truth as Super Size and Super Skinny meet up for their final weigh-in. It's been three months since Kim and Trudy left the feeding clinic with their tailor-made eating plans.
Today they're back, and it's time to find out if their new diets have made any difference on the scales. I'm actually feeling quite nervous about finding out how much I've put on and how my measurements have changed, because with all the marathon training that I've been doing, I've been finding it quite tough to actually put on the weight. I just seem to be eating and eating and eating. A bit nervous about getting my weight results today. At the beginning, I lost quite a lot of weight, and then it sort of plateaued off a bit, so I really don't know how much I weigh at the moment. It'll be interesting to find out. Twelve weeks ago, Kim was a miniature marathon runner, weighing just six stone two, whose tiny portions and mostly liquid diet meant she was running on empty. She spent five days in the feeding clinic, swapping meals with supersized takeaway addict Trudy. This is revolting. It really is hot. Competitive Kim gave it her all and polished off every last morsel of the kinds of processed foods she absolutely despised. Nothing would beat her in her race to flesh out her fragile frame. She came face to face with the severe damage that her poor diet and extreme training regime was doing to her skeletal body and reality hit. I did find it quite upsetting looking at the photos and seeing just exactly how skinny I looked but that's been quite a driving force for me and I'm hoping that people can actually see the changes that I've made. But has it all been enough? It's time for Kim and Trudy to find out if it's all been worth it. Come You look amazing. I love your dress. Well, Lovely. She said she couldn't wait to meet you again. No, no, you look fantastic. Fuller in the face, the cheekbones is back, you know, because you were really quite sunken. Yeah. And all, all across the top half, you, you just look better. You look really beautiful. How do you think Trudy looks? She looks absolutely fabulous. She really does. I feel better, a lot better. You look great. How's your running? Uh, it's been going really well. I've been setting personal best. I'm now ranked ninth in the UK for the marathon. Um, but my endurance, my speed, my, even my recovery rate have improved. Because I said that she would improve her performance, improve her recovery time, beat personal records, and she has. And not only that, you have also managed to put on weight. Thank you. you have put on four pounds on top of all that. And are you enjoying food now? Yes, I am. I'm enjoying the food. I'm cooking chilies and curries at home. So there have been quite a few big changes, but it's been good. Excellent. Yeah. Trudy, have you had a battered sausage since being here? No. Nope. Really? Not even been what? near a fish and chip shop. I'm delighted. I haven't had a takeaway meal um, since the dart swap. Well, again, I have to say I'm pretty chuffed with you too. Because you have gone and managed to lose over a stone and a half. And you've lost seven inches around your waist. Really? I didn't think I'd lost anything there seven whatsoever. Seven inches. You happy? Very. Yeah? Now remember <laughs> that this has got to carry on now. Lovely. This is for life? Yes, definitely. Definitely. My big concern with Kim was that here is a woman training to a professional level for a marathon. How on earth was I going to get her to put on any weight? But I'm really pleased to say that she has put on four pounds and she's really improved her training. Her recovery time's better and her speeds are now improved. Today I feel really pleased with the results. I was quite surprised, obviously, putting on the two inches around the waist. I was quite pleased with that. I think I'll be definitely be sticking to the diet plan because it's made such an improvement in my running, in my home life and to my confidence as well. I'm hoping to put a bit more weight on and keep improving with the running too. The two seem to be working very well together. So, yeah, this is just a stepping stone to keep going forwards. Since Trudy's ditched the takeaway, she is looking healthier and she's feeling so much better. She is actually losing weight and she's got much, much, much higher energy levels. It's doing her the world of good. I didn't imagine for one minute I'd lost seven inches. Obviously, I've got a long, long way to go, but I've actually got a figure now. I can put a belt on, there's some hips, there's a difference between my belly and my boobs. So I'm very pleased with what's happening. Overall, the results and the experience have just been fantastic, totally life-changing.